Coming up on today's Airborne, Solar Impulse is on its way across the USA, Terrafugia's next step, and the FAA wants more info on a requested LSA exception for the Icon A5. Welcome to Airborne here on Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale. The Solar Impulse solar powered airplane began its track across the United States on Friday by completing the first leg of its planned transcontinental flight. With Bertrand Picard at the controls, Solar Impulse launched Friday morning at 6.12 Pacific Daylight Time from Moffett Field in San Francisco, California. And it landed successfully after an 18-hour flight at 12.30 a.m. Mountain Daylight Time on Saturday in Phoenix, Arizona. Solar Impulse will now spend a few days in Phoenix before continuing its journey. Two public tours of the aircraft are scheduled during the Phoenix layover, and the team plans to host open house events at each tour stop. The next hop for the Solar Impulse will be from Phoenix to Dallas, Texas, at which point it will turn northeast towards St. Louis, Missouri, and traverse the Midwest to Washington, D.C. From there, it will turn north and eventually end the Odyssey in New York City. The trans-U.S. flight was originally not planned, but became an opportunity for the team to test a new wing spar. The project's ultimate goal is to fly around the world. That journey is scheduled for 2015, and it will be attempted by a second-generation aircraft, the HBSIB, which is currently still under construction. They have yet to field a production flying car for the masses, but the folks at Terrafugia are already looking at what's next. Terrafugia, currently in development of the transition street legal airplane, has begun feasibility studies of a four seat vertical takeoff and landing plug in hybrid electric flying car. They're calling it the TFX. Incorporating the state-of-the-art and intelligent systems, fly-by-wire controls, and currently available technology, the TFX will further increase the level of safety, simplicity, and convenience of personal aviation. Talk about taking your own sweet time. Last year, Icon Aircraft petitioned the FAA for an exemption that would permit Icon Aircraft to incorporate a spin-resistant airframe in the Icon A5 at a weight above the current light sport aircraft definition. Now, a year later, the FAA sent a letter to the company saying it needs additional information again. Tom Patton explains why. In the letter, which was sent by Small Airplane Directorate Manager Earl Lawrence, the FAA asks for a description of the design data that Icon Aircraft claims meets the requirements of the relevant FARs, such as a Model A5 master drawing list or top drawings that includes revision level and date. The agency also asks for a list of flight test conditions in which the company confirmed that the A5 met the requirements needed for the exemption. The FAA also wants a legally binding statement that the Icon A5 meets the Part 23 requirements and is asking for information about inflatable restraints, special maintenance procedures, and, quote, an explanation of the factors leading to ICON aircraft's request that a grant of its petition include a requirement for persons operating the aircraft while exercising the privileges of a sport pilot certificate to have received ICON authorized training on the aircraft. The letter says that while the agency strives to process such requests in 120 days, quote, the complexity, extent, and precedent-setting aspects of your petition require additional time for us to make our determination. For Airborne, I'm Tom Patton. Boeing has reportedly begun talks with potential customers for its next-generation 777 airplane, for now called the 777X, even though the plane may never be built. The new 777 would have more composite components than current models of the plane, along with more efficient engines. Boeing sees the 777X as a direct competitor to the Airbus A350 XWB, which is closing in on its first flight 
and is scheduled for first delivery in 2017. Wall Street analyst Howard Rubel told Bloomberg that the new airplane would probably have 407 seats and be about 21% more fuel efficient than the current 777-300ER. He said that the plane might give Boeing an opportunity to limit the market for the A350 XWB. However, Bloomberg reports that Boeing's directors have not yet given final approval to begin building the new airplane. What's the price for aviation history? Maybe $300 million? The final flight of the X-51A Wave Rider test program has accomplished a breakthrough in the development of flight, reaching 5.1 Mach over the Pacific Ocean on May 1st, a little after 10 a.m. Pacific time. The cruiser traveled over 230 nautical miles in just over six minutes over the Point Magoo Naval Air Warfare Center C range. It was the longest of the four X-51A test flights and the longest air-breathing hypersonic flight ever. The X-51A took off from the Air Force Test Center at Edwards Air Force Base, California, under the wing of a B-52H Stratofortress. It was released at approximately 50,000 feet and accelerated to 4.8 Mach in just 26 seconds, powered by a solid rocket booster. After separating from the booster, the cruiser's scramjet engine then lit and accelerated to 5.1 Mach at 60,000 feet. This was the last of four test vehicles originally conceived when the $300 million technology demonstration program began in 2004. The program objective was to prove the viability of air-breathing high-speed scramjet propulsion. Eve's Jetman Rossi, the world's first jet-powered man, will make his first public U.S. flights this summer. At where else? EAA Airvin. He'll be showcasing the cutting edge of human flight at the world's greatest aviation celebration on July 29th through August the 4th. Using a carbon Kevlar jet wing with four engines, each of which is capable of 22 kilograms of thrust, the Swiss aviator is able to propel himself through the sky at upwards of 150 miles per hour, controlled only by a simple throttle in his hand. The rest of the controls are left to the human fuselage, that is, Rossi himself, who simply uses his shoulders, body, and legs to steer, pitch, and maintain controlled flight. Complete details on the Air Venture flight schedule will be announced as it is finalized. It will be an exciting Saturday in the park as one of the music world's legendary bands, Chicago, returns to Oshkosh for the opening night concert at Air Venture. And oh yes, the concert is actually on Monday night, July 29th. Over 40 plus years of recording, Chicago has attracted multiple generations of fans. Chicago's jazz-infused rock and roll with horn sound has created hits in six different decades. Ford will sponsor the concert that will be held on the Phillips 66 Plaza immediately following the afternoon air show. The concert is free to all air venture attendees that day. Chicago appeared at the 2010 air venture and that concert was one of the best attended ever at Air Venture. You're watching Airborne, more in a moment. Redbird Skyport is a multifaceted aviation laboratory charged with developing innovative solutions to the issues facing the industry. It started out as a vision for a laboratory where we could objectively measure the systems and the processes that we were developing. Being able to put some objective measures behind the anecdotal evidence that we have about the value of motion and the application of this technology is very, very important because until we can objectively measure it and play that data back, we can't design training systems that make the best use of it. 
For more information about Redbird Flight Simulations, as well as Redbird's new Skyport, visit www.redbirdflightsimulations.com or www.redbirdskyport.com. Welcome back. If you'd like to suggest a story for Airborne, Aero TV, our website or podcast, drop us an email to news-spy at aero-news.net. The FAA has issued a special airworthiness information bulletin for Cessna T-206H airplanes, saying that there is the potential for in-flight fire as a result of failure of the V-band coupling securing the tailpipe to the turbocharger or the wastegate elbow to the wastegate valve. The bulletin is the result of an in-flight fire on a Cessna T-206H with only 1,000 hours time in service since new. Investigation revealed the V-band coupling that secures the tailpipe to the turbocharger housing had failed in flight. The FAA says that as part of all normal pre-flight inspections of the nose section, an item for the co-pilot's nose area of the cowling to reach under the airplane to check the tailpipe for security in its mounting should be included. A loose tailpipe or easily displaced tailpipe should be brought to the attention of maintenance personnel prior to further operations. Well, they fixed the FAA's furlough problems, and now 42 members of the U.S. Senate has set their sights on preventing the planned contract tower closures. Those 42 senators have sent a letter to Transportation Secretary Ray LaHood and FAA Administrator Michael Huerta to call on the agency to stop the planned closure of 149 contract towers. In the letter, the members highlighted that the bill passed in the Senate on April 25th and signed into law by the President to end furloughs at the FAA provides enough budget flexibility to also fully fund contract towers currently scheduled for closure this summer. How would you like to experience AirVenture at Oshkosh from the inside as part of the ANN team? We're once again looking for a few good men and women with writing, photography, audio, and video experience to join us as an aero stringer for a week of incredible adventure and a lot of hard work. You'll get to spend a week working as part of the world's leading aero news organization. And while it's hard work, it's also a lot of fun. And as always, a week of stringing for us just might open the doors to a new opportunity of employment as an aero journalist here at ANN. If you have a love for all things aviation and the skills we aforementioned and love Wisconsin in the summertime, you may just be the person we're looking for. For more information and to put your resume in front of the boss, email jim at arrow-news.net with the subject line Stringers Wanted for 2013 and good luck. And now it's time for our Arrow Video of the Week. For those of you who have a helicopter rating, you know how amazingly capable today's generation of rotorcraft can be. But you need to see this video of a helo rescue where the pilot balanced his skids across a guardrail to offload rescue personnel to really get the idea. Simply search YouTube for M-E-L-V-A-T-N-E-T -E to see for yourself. Sometimes the worlds of romance and aviation collide. And such was the case recently when a San Francisco man decided to deliver an engagement ring to his hopefully bride-to-be aboard a remote-controlled hexocopter. The hopeful groom, Jason Muscat, writes on his blog that the idea was a riff on the drone topic that's been so prevalent this year. A friend of Muscat's contacted a wedding photographer from Fresno, California, who also happens to be an avid RC helicopter pilot and an aerial videographer. To make his proposal, Jason and his girlfriend, Christina, went to Alamo Square in San Francisco, where he began making a video of her talking about her pregnancy. 
In producing the video, the photographer inserted the footage of the flight of the small drone to the park, where it landed at Christina's feet. Jason took the ring from the aircraft, went down on one knee, and proposed. And of course, she said yes. After post-production, the video was uploaded to YouTube for all the world to see. Here's hoping Jason and Christina have a long and happy life together. Well, that's our program for Tuesday, May 7th. Remember, you can get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. And please remember that Aeroborne is streamed twice weekly and is always online. Please join us again next Friday for a new edition of Aeroborne. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.